Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey Ravel and I'm a second grade teacher at Ruth Ann Monroe Primary School. And today I'm here to teach you a little bit about the gradual release model with differentiation during distance learning. So from this opportunity, what I want you to really take away our learning goal is I want you to be able to utilize um, gradual release with differentiation in order to meet the needs of students during distance learning or even once we return to school. So in order for me to kind of model and show um, how, to, how to do this, I have actually presented um, my slides that I would give to the students. So um, I would have a slideshow every day for the students and with that, I would accompany it with a um, teacher video um, each day. Um, the first day was always me modeling what I wanted the students to be able to do um, and then um, having strategies, talking about that and then um, moving on from that. So the first day was always modeling with I do. So um, as you can see, these are exactly the um, slides that I would present to the students. Um, I would remind the students that they would always have to write in the yellow boxes that were on the slides so that I could provide feedback to them um, for the work that they would do, or they could upload a picture. Um, I would also start with um, giving them the learning goal and the success criteria. The words would be highlighted because I would um, explain to them how we would be achieving those things um, and learning those things using the success criteria for the week. Um, for this particular week and um, for most weeks, there would be stages to our learning. For um, first two days, for Monday, Tuesday, the students would be working on connections and um, for pollination. So this week was about pollination. And throughout the whole week, as you can see at the bottom, main idea and key details was worked on the whole week. Um, no matter what we were, um, it was how it was connected to whatever we were learning um, about for that day. So part two would be Wednesday, Thursday. There would be two days of how humans am, um, positively or negatively impact pollination. And then Friday was um, creating a model and kind of integrating science into reading. So um, I would always start with a um, introduction for this particular day. It was the PBS website. Um, it was a video the kids could click on to watch. And I would click on that and watch that with the students in my teacher video. And then we would have a short discussion about what pollination was. Then we would always start with uh, um, articles that were provided from the um, county. So today's article is what is pollination? I would expect the students to read with me. I would read it with them. We would have a short discussion about um, what the article was about, pull out some things that they learned before talking about the main idea. So this is the page where we would um, stop and kind of think, well, what ways, what strategies can we use to determine the main idea? So things like the title and the heading, the introduction and the conclusion, um, images, bold print, um, thinking about what the author really repeated, what the author was trying to get across, and finding those key details. So before I would give them the uh, main idea, I would go back to the article, we would have a discussion using those strategies, and then I would give them the main idea, which was over here on the side. After that, we would kind of use that main idea to help us to think about the key details. Again, for this day, it was modeling. So I would really go back to the article um, using the main idea, author, what the author was trying to really tell us. We would pull out key details that would really um, support that main idea. So I would give them the um, two key details that they would have to record into a notebook. Um, as I said before, everything had a purpose. So we weren't just focusing on main ID and key details for that day, it always connected to some other bigger purpose for our learning. So the kids would typically write um, in the top of their notebook the question, which the question for this day was, what connections can we make when learning about pollination? And then under it for this day, they had to write the key details because they were gonna use those key details to write about pollination and the connections between them. Um, similar to what we would do at school, the kids taking notes, um, writing the date at the top, keeping the work nice and organized. Um, and I would even model that for them, um, how they could, um, I would show them in a notebook how they could write that down and keep it nice and organized so that they had a model. So for day two is that we do, um, we do day. And that's where this, I would still give them the main idea, talk about the main idea, but then they would have to give a key detail. 
So um, for this day, it was about melons, growing melons. We would have read it, have a short discussion, um, use the strategies to find the main idea, talk about the main idea, always going back to the article, having the discussion. And then um, I would always give them a key detail for day two, um, just to give them a nice model before they had to give me a key detail. And as you can see on the side, they have to add that key details to their note sheet for today because they today was the day that they had to write about the connections with plants um, and pollination. So always using uh, main idea and key details learning to help them um, with other learning, supporting that learning. For day three, that was the you do. Um, the students were expected to do the work. Um, for this day, it depended where we were at in the marking period. For this day, I gave them a key detail. Sometimes I wouldn't give them anything, um, especially if I wanted to assess their ability for main idea and key detail. Um, but for this particular day, I did give them one key detail um, that they could use and then they gave the other. So we would talk about honeybees in trouble, read it together, have a discussion. And then like you can see in the yellow, they would have to um, use those strategies to write a main idea in their own words. And then um, using my key detail as well, not copying it, they had to write their own key detail. So um, how I would implement key, main idea and key details into guided reading work um, the students would have something similar to what I would do in um, main whole group. They would have a slideshow for guided reading. I would have a video that went along with their guided reading um, slideshows for the day. And um, for day one, um, they always, they either had it on Monday or Tuesday. It was kind of staggered, kind of like what I would do at school. I, kept, I tried to keep it the same and consistent for the kids. Um, they got a copy of the slideshow and they would have to write in the yellow. So for um, one and above grade level students, those students always had a text that was higher. For this particular text, it was a new ZLA um, text that was 650 Lexile. Um, the way I would differentiate for my higher kids, I would not only give them a higher level text, but I would also expect them to do more. Um, since I would be modeling a lot of this in whole group, it was kind of expected. Now they took that learning and used that for guided reading um, as, as they were working. So they had to be more independent um, for their work. So this was my slides for um, this particular week, um, reminding them to write in the yellow. And I would always go over um, word study, uh, one grade level word study for um, the week. So we would practice, we would have a discussion about this, practice writing some of these. Sometimes I would model um, sentences I would write and then um, they would be expected to write those down as well. We would talk about vocabulary. Um, I liked to put some pictures to go along with the words as well because it really um, helped the kids to not only know what the, the um, word was, but to also visualize what I was talking about, especially with soybeans. A lot of kids don't know what that even is. So giving them a picture, giving them um, an idea of what that could mean. So for the article, I would give them the title. So Honey Bee Food Hotspot is no longer hot. Um, we would talk about the author, um, the picture with the caption, and then the students would be expected to make a prediction and ask any questions before they moved on. So I would always tell them in my teacher video, make sure you stop here and stop and jot. What's your prediction? What's your questions? Write it down either in the yellow box or in a notebook. So here is the article. For one and above students, they, I would read the introduction and maybe the first heading part, but then they would be expected to finish um, reading it before they stopped and jotted and did the main idea. There are always four parts, sometimes more, um, depending on where we were at in the marking period. For today, it was four different parts. So what questions do you have? What connections can you make? So what's connect what are you learning that could connect? Or what have you learned? Did anything really surprise you and make you go wow? And then writing the main idea from just this first part. Um, so in whole group, we were really doing the whole main idea key details from the whole text. But for um, got a reading group, small group, we would really break it down between um, paragraphs um, and then pages to help them to better think about the author's purpose for the whole thing um, um, before they reached the end for their second day. 
So then they would be expected to read the second part of the article and then have to stop and jot the main idea for the second part by themselves. And I would give them a reminder of the strategies they could use and just remind them, you know, Wednesday, you're going to have to write down um, the main idea and key details. So maybe write it down somewhere. Um, make sure you read the article the second day because they always had a day in between before they were expected to do their Google, their Google form. So my friends that were below and slightly below grade level, those students had an on grade level text. Um, for this particular one, it was a 550 Lexile. Um, so even though it was on grade level and even though some of those students could not read it, um, I still really tried to make sure it was an on grade level text because the more you read it, the more you're together, the more you're going to be able to eventually do it yourself. So I gave a lot of support um, for differentiation. I, I had a lot of support for those students. They also had um, voc not only vocabulary, but they had sight words that we talked about. Um, so just a lot more prompting um, and support for the students that were below level. I always thought it was important to have an orange grade level text even whenever we were at school because the more they're exposed, the more words that they see, the more um, that they're going to be able to use those words um, once they move on with their reading. So group two, um, they had the same, um, I always made sure to have the same word study for one grade level um, work, and then they had sight words. Um, I would pull those sight words out of the text that they would be reading for that particular day. We would talk about those words. Um, sometimes I would write them on a um, whiteboard, have a discussion about where we've seen those words before. The vocabulary, again, I would have pictures to help them to better comprehend what they, what those words actually meant, um, go over some of those words, tricky words that they might see in the article. And then again, we would make a prediction. Sometimes, depending on how far along we were in the marking period, I would help them to make a prediction. I would have a discussion with them or, or I would ask questions with them um, kind of to prompt them before we read the article all together. We would read together. And then for this first time, for the first part, we would just stop and jot questions, connections, and wows. And then we would read the second part, and then we would think about the main idea for the whole thing. Again, it depended on where we were in the marking period. Towards the end, the students were expected to do main idea from the first part as well. But for this part, um, it depended. Sometimes I would help them with the main idea. Um, and um, give them some more guidance versus my own grade level and above grade level students. Um, I would review the, the strategies for, you know, determining the main idea and remind them, Thursday, you're going to have to do this yourself. Um, we would have a discussion about that. Make sure to remind them to reread the article before the next day. So for day two, the, kids, the students always had an exit ticket, I would call it, on Google Forms to, um, to think about the main idea and key details from the text. Even though the students might have written it down, I wanted to always make sure that they were able to, you know, write that down and verbalize what they were thinking for main idea and key details. So for the exit tickets, they were similar, but for my own grade level and above, um, they had an exit ticket that not only had them tell the main idea and key details, but also had them have a comprehension part. Um, from the years of teaching students that are on and above. Although they can read higher level text, they always struggle with comprehension, um, comprehending the text that they are reading. So pulling in the comprehension questions because for the um, last part of my guided reading groups, I would always have conferencing. So the first five minutes, I would talk to the parents, to give them like a quick update about how their student was doing with their work at school before I moved into having a discussion about their guided reading work. So I would always pull up their um, guided reading slideshow, go over what they wrote, um, maybe make some improvements, talk about what they wrote. Um, and if they had done their Google form, talking about the Google form, um, especially for my above level students, um, if they didn't get the comprehension questions um, correct, we would go back, look for those answers and think about what we could have written instead. So um, thank you for learning about um, gradual release, the gradual release model and differentiation during distance learning. I hope that you found um, some of this helpful. I know that 
we do a lot of this whenever we're at school, but bringing it into distance learning was a little tricky and a little challenging. So I hope that you um, have something that you can take away and utilize in your own classroom. All right, have a great day.